started the recording. And great. Okay. I think we are set to go now. <laughs> um, let's see. Yep. So let me just get my PowerPoint arranged here. Okay, this is a learning experience. So uh, <laughs> yes, so pardon the uh, the technical uh, wrangling at the beginning, but um, but again, welcome to the webinar on the Vista PPR Telling Your Story with Impact. Um, this is Sarah Wessling with Habitat for Humanity, the Vista Program Manager, and with me I have Jody Schaefer, the Vista Leader. Uh, and I'd like to thank Jody for all of the work that um, she put into putting this together. Like I mentioned in the introduction, this is a, our first time presenting on this topic, and Jody was really helpful in sort of helping think through what what kinds what material we wanted to cover. So um, thanks, Jody. Okay, so um, just for some housekeeping things, um, we have a just to kind of talk you through um, how you'll be participating or ways that you can participate in today's call. So as I mentioned, um, just in the interest of time, we're not gonna spend a lot of time, uh, we're not gonna do introductions verbally um, or over audio to start off, but there are ways that you can participate, including, um, you know, it, there will be some opportunities where we'll ask um, for people to, um, you know, to share some feedback and and um, and speak up, and so when those opportunities present themselves, you can raise your hand um, using the uh, using the little raise your hand feature there on your um, control panel, and then we'll know that um, you you'd like to contribute something and um, call on you and unmute you so that you can speak. Um, and then in addition to that, just um, if there's anybody. Uh, there's also instructions here about how to manage the audio. So if uh, so, you can either participate by telephone um, or using the microphone and speakers on your computer. Um, also, there's the chat feature. Um, so please do um, sub submit comments into the chat um, panel. Um, one thing to know is that anything that you submit in the chat panel will come to the presenters. Um, We'll, we're the only ones who will be able to view it when you submit it, um, but then, you know, useful or comments that are to be shared with the group, that, then we'll repost those. Um, but you can also use that to um, communicate with us if you're having difficulty hearing or difficulty connecting, um, something like that. Um, feel free to send us a message and we, we can uh, in the chat panel and, and know that that won't be broadcast to the entire group. Um, so just... Um, and starting off here, I wanted to do a quick poll um, because we're, we're guessing that some of you are in the same office and might be participating together. We might have some VISTAs and supervisors, you know, at the same computer participating. So just to get a sense of that, um, we want to do a quick poll here. Um, so if you could uh, just respond to the question, um, so how many webinar attendees are, are participating with you? Um, it might be just you logged in, but if you're you know, sharing a, um, the computer and the audio with one or more other people, um, let us know how many of, and that'll help us get, give an overall sense of how many we have on the call overall. Okay. Great. Ooh, this is my first time watching the poll on my own, so it's very exciting to see how this works. <laughs> uh, great. It looks like we just have a few more people maybe left to respond. Um, and then, great. Okay, so yeah, so there's some of you out there on your own, about 20, um, let's see. Um, oh. And here are the results. Okay, so you'll see we've got um, about 64% of people are kind of participating on their own, 21% there's more than one, and um, so a good mix of folks out there. Okay, great. Um, now, on, on with the show, as they say. <laughs> okay, so now that we've got housekeeping, um, in order, we'll kind of move on to talking about what our learning objectives are for today. Um, 
As Sarah mentioned, this is the first webinar that uh, Habitat Minnesota has done on the PPR process. And the focus this year is going to be different as a result. Uh, really, the main purpose of the webinar is to help us all understand how to demonstrate impact and how to uh, tell a story to demonstrate that impact. So the focus this year is going to be on the content of the reports and how to demonstrate and report impact. You all also received uh, by email the guidebook uh, that has the instructions in terms of the reporting process for CNCS. And it also include a num included a number of examples that I'm hoping will give you the big picture of how for purposes of CNCS reporting, the reports that you submit online are ultimately used. Um, so hopefully you found that and will find that information in the guidebook helpful to you. So next slide. The PPR is an acronym for Project Progress Report. And it's used for gathering and reporting the impact of the work that the VISTAs do. I want everybody to understand that the PPR is not a performance review. That comes later in the year. Mm -hmm. And it's not an activity report. So we're not looking for you to list every wonderful thing that you did throughout the quarter. Uh, instead, you're gonna be focusing on one or two of your major accomplishments. And ultimately, this report um, is used to report to funders. In our case here, um, we're reporting to CNCS, which then uses the information included in the report that Sarah writes uh, is a report then that goes to Congress, who's ultimately the funder of the VISTA program. As we all discovered with the government shutdown, um, ultimately, you know, the money that, that runs these programs, you know, is authorized by Congress. So, you know, that's, that's really the big picture of when you're sitting down to write your report, um, keep in mind, you're not, just writing to Sarah and Jody to, to tell us about what you're doing, you know, really ultimately you're writing about what you're doing so that we can, so that we can pass that information along, which makes the case to, you know, the, the folks there in Congress who are deciding if this program is a worthwhile place to invest taxpayer dollars. Um, so, so keep that in mind. I think when you're putting these reports together, that it's, it's, a large audience <laughs> that uh, is interested in this information. And there's a lot of reasons to track and report impact data. Um, and it applies to the VISTAs as well as to the affiliates to track and record the impact of their work. Most of the, the reasons are related to funders and the com competition that we now have for the donor dollar. The ability to provide evidence of the impact of what you do has become increasingly important, as was demonstrated just this week in the National Public Radio story that I emailed to you earlier this week. Hopefully a number of you were able to take a look at that story, which talked about um, a change in one of the organizations tracking um, and reporting on quality nonprofit organizations. Basically, these days, everyone is looking to get a return on their investment and tracking and reporting impact data will help you to 
report um, the value of what you do in a way that's meaningful to funders. Um, so as Jody mentioned, you know, and as I mentioned, um, you know, the information in the PPRs is shared with the corporation, CNCS, um, which is then also reporting to Congress. Um, but this information is used in more ways than, than just to report to that one funder. Um, in addition to reporting to the corporation, um, Habitat Minnesota also uses information that we get from your progress reports to identify best practices of what affiliates right here in Minnesota are doing. Um, oftentimes, many of the best practices that, that um, we identify are, are practices initiated by VISTAs or things that are created by VISTAs that have value to share with, with the, the statewide audience of Habitat affiliates who, um, you know, if one affiliate has a great success in developing a program, for example, um, a brush with kindness, you know, the lessons that that affiliate learned and, and that are documented by that VISTA can be beneficial to other affiliates around the state. So um, we identify best practices from the reports that you submit and those then sometimes get turned into case studies or it becomes an award um, that affiliates might receive. Um, you know, like the picture uh, that you see here is uh, one of our best practice award winners from um, from last year, so an affiliate that um, did a great job with their um, with their restore program and received um, you know a best practice award. So um, so it's used for more than just reporting to Congress. Um, also, we use the information in our Vista recruitment um, in other grant applications. Um, you know, what Habitat Minnesota applies for a variety of different kinds of funding to support affiliates, and so this information can be used in those ways as well. Um, so it's more than just um, for you know, reporting to one funder. We really use the information in multiple ways. Um, so we also want you, to, you all to be thinking about ways, other ways that you can use the information. Um, so when you sit down to write your report, Rather than, again, just sitting and thinking you're writing this report for Sarah and Jody, to think about how can I write about the accomp my accomplishments in a way that it can be used for multiple audiences. Um, so I'm, um, I'd like to ask folks, um, you know, using, the, um, using your chat panel, um, you know, share with us your thoughts on other ways that you can use this um, the, your, the information that you're reporting about accomplishments, what other ways can could you and your affiliate repurpose that same information that you're sharing with us? What are some other venues for that information? Or what other audiences might be interested in that same information? So to maybe get you started, I'll share a couple examples. Just realizing, um, I'm not able to hear anyone right now, so I don't know if that means nobody is speaking or. Oh. Everyone is muted. Oh, okay. They, yep. <laughs> so we would have to, uh, if they want to be unmuted, they could raise their hand and then we'll unmute them. Okay. Thanks. Otherwise, Eva. people might be. You bet. And I think we have some comments, though. Great. Okay. So Dustin added that reporting to the board and, and grant writing, that those could be used for that. Um, similar with Britta, um, used for the board, but for annual dinners. Always nice to have stories for that. Thanks, Britta. Um, Leah mentioned reporting the impact of their NRI program here in the Twin Cities. Um, and Zach mentioned also the board reports, newsletters, etc. Thanks, guys. Yeah, those are all. Oh, got another one. Annie says reporting to the public and using information to help with fundraising. And Aaron, oh, this is a great one. Um, I'm biased because it's my vista. But Aaron says I was thinking resumes as well, things to add to your portfolio or to your own resume. Um, probably good stories to even if you're on LinkedIn, something like that. Uh, and then um, Andrea added recruitment messages, and I think you probably mean like volunteer recruitment. 
great. Those are all excellent examples. You, you know, you got, you hit all the things on <laughs> plus some additional ones. So can I just add that, that Zach and Tristan are participating together. And so I attributed that comment to Zach and it was actually Tristan <laughs> they wanted to clarify that. <laughs> Well, and thanks for thanks to Zach too for uh, giving credit where due. Or <laughs> exactly. Wonderful. Great. So uh, you know, you all are. I think we're all on the same page here. So um, you know, the the idea is just you know think creatively as you're planning. You know, as you're writing your progress report, and don't just write it and then just put that report away and never use that information again. You know, hang on to those. Um, you know, the when you're writing up your accomplishments. Put that information in a file somewhere that you can go to regularly when you need, you know, to share examples of the work you've done. Um, and, you know, particularly, you know, I'm really glad Erin mentioned resumes and cover letters and portfolios of your work. Um, so, you know, this does don't overlook the fact that the information about your accomplishments and, and writing that up in a way that's really impactful um, for people who work outside of Habitat can help you get to the next level in getting the job you want after VISTA or, or getting into the graduate school that you want. Um, if you can talk about your accomplishments succinctly um, and share those, um, that can take you a long way. Okay, the due dates uh, for the PPRs are listed on this screen. It's all their due dates are also included in the guidebook that was sent to you. There will be four reports due in any VISTA year. And the first one will be due November 15th, and that will cover this quarter, uh, which is August 1st through October 31st. So pretty soon you will be getting an email from me reminding you that the report is due. Then I wanted to highlight uh, that there are a number of people who are involved in our CNCS reporting. Obviously, VISTAs and supervisors begin the process by writing up the report. When the reports are submitted, I read all 16 reports. I write summaries of those reports for CIRA. And then I also will be providing feedback to each of you with regard to those reports. So it's an individual response to each of the VISTAs with regard to the reports that are submitted. Then Sarah has the responsibility of pulling together the reports um, and issuing a report to CNCS. And in the guidebook, you see examples of the VISTA reports that were submitted and how Sarah then took that information and made reports to CNCS. Now, I don't think we've been privileged to see the report that CNCS then puts together <laughs> to deliver to Congress. But um, as, as we've already stated, this is really where the information ultimately goes. And it's critical for the continued funding of the VISTA program. And um, something that we do see is um, the state office does compile a monthly report that they send on to the state office, um, highlighting a few projects, you know, based on information that that is sent to them by myself and and my peers. So, you know, last year I think Habitat was highlighted in six of those monthly reports, um, and then at least one we were highlighted twice. So, um, and. We, one of the things we will commit to doing this year is sharing copies of those monthly reports with you all um, so that you can see the kinds of things that the state office, you know, is highlighting in, um, from the senior core and, and VISTA projects across the state um, that they're working with. Um, 
So we've given you kind of some background um, about you know what the reports are, why they're important, how we use the information. Um, but another, or what we wanted to also do is just kind of walk through with you some steps um, that you that Vistas and supervisors sh could follow um, to as you're working on um, developing your reports. Um, so we're going to start with um, step one, which is selecting the accomplishments to report. Um, so what I what I would recommend is rather than sitting down and just writing about your accomplishments, you know, for Vista, you know, Vista shouldn't just sit down and write up your accomplishments kind of in a vacuum. Um, but rather, it's this is you, you really want to think carefully about what are the key accomplishments to highlight. And, um, and often the supervisors are, are an important part of providing some perspective on that because they can, um, they have a vision of the, more of the vision of the larger picture of the organization and where, um, and how the work that you're doing as a VISTA fits into that overall picture. Um, so this, so, Identifying these key accomplishments should be a joint process that VISTAs and supervisors do together, or at least have a conversation about. You know, maybe as a VISTA, you sit down and think about, these are what I think are my key accomplishments. Maybe your supervisor does the same, and then you meet to share, do we have the same things? Do we have different things? And from our two lists, which are the few key ones we want to focus on in writing this report? Um, and here is a list of questions that can, that you can use to maybe help identify which of the many accomplishments that you've had during the quarter might be key ones to focus on um, when writing your report. So again, remember, this isn't an activity report. It's not, an op we don't want you to sit down and write a list of every single thing you did during the quarter. Rather, we want you to focus on a few key accomplishments. Um, also keep in mind it's, you know, for supervisors, you know, that this is not a performance review. So the report isn't, although we'd love to hear, and, and VISTA, and you should share with your VISTAs and with us what's going well, what your VISTA is doing well, um, or what might need to be improved. This report isn't the place to do that. Um, you know, in writing about the accomplishments, what we really want to focus on is impact. What's happening as a result of the work that the VISTA is doing? Um, and if there's things that are going, you know, we love to hear the vistas are the vistas fantastic. Everybody loves them. We'd be lost without them. Um, that's important information, but that shouldn't be the bulk of what you're sharing in your report because um, it, that's not going to convince Congress to give to keep funding the Vista program. You know the fact that the that the Vista is um, is beloved by the entire staff. Although we wish that would convince Congress, um, unfortunately, that's not how things work. Um, see. So in addition, so once you've maybe identified a few key accomplishments, then the next, um, the next step is kind of focusing in on um, how to describe those accomplishments in, um, in a way that's going to have meaning for the audience who, again, remember, the audience is not just Sarah and Jody. Um, you know, Jody and I, we, we know a lot about your affiliates. We, you know, we're supportive of all the work you're doing, um, but we have to be able to tell the story of why what you're doing is helping to serve more families in poverty, because that's what keeps the program going. When we can show that what we're doing um, is serving more families. Um, can you, sorry, we have a, a question. Can you review what the CNCS priorities are? Yeah, that's um, actually, we're going to get to that next. Oh, okay. So, um, we'll get to that in just a second. There are, oh. um, it, well, overall, you know, housing and um, providing affordable housing is is a key element or is one key part of what the CNCS priorities are. So overall, that's how our project fits in. And, you know, by um, providing housing opportunities or improving people's housing situation, um, you know, that. Uh, that is one of the key areas. There are some other kind of um, special interest areas, and we'll talk about those in just a moment. Um, but before we get to that, just to dig in a little bit deeper on accomplishments um, and thinking about how to frame accomplishments, I think these questions um, can be helpful in fleshing them, them out. Um, and it, 
there was a, an example of this actually just recently, Jody and I visited Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity and met with um, Maddie, uh, the youth engagement VISTA there and her supervisor, Annie, um, to learn about, you know, to talk about all the great work Annie's been doing with youth engagement. But in that, so in that meeting, we were talking about, you know, the great opportunity, volunteer opportunities that Maddie's been able to organize, the great participation we've been, they've been getting, which is fantastic. Um, so, but in kind of telling the impact of that work, you know, what we talked about was kind of digging deeper in the, and getting to the, what I call the so what of, of, okay, Annie, or Maddie's done all this great work to engage youth, but how do I explain to Congress or to the corporation why that is so important? Um, so as we were talking, um, you know, we thought about, we started with, okay, what is the need or problem they're trying to address? Um, so in their situation, what had been happening at Twin Cities Habitat is that they would get calls from youth groups who had youth that wanted to volunteer or be active with, with Twin Cities Habitat, but they were under 16. And so they couldn't be on a construction site. They couldn't do landscaping kinds of things. Um, so they needed, so they were having to turn those volunteers away because they didn't have an opportunity to engage them. Um, but then with Maddie's position, the youth engagement position, they've been able to develop opportunities for youth to do um, projects like, um, you know, building storage boxes that are then given to homeowners or building Adirondack chairs um, that are, you know, given to homeowners maybe who are moving into a new house, but also those chairs are being stole, sold at the ReStore. Um, so projects like, so they were, they've been developing these projects um, and now when they get calls from youth groups, they can engage those volunteers and they're developing a whole new set of youth um, to engage in the organization. Um, so that was, the, that was the need. So then the issue was they were having to turn away people who wanted to be in, engaged as volunteers. Now they're not having to do that anymore. So what are the measurable sh short and long-term objectives? So Twin Cities Habitat can now and Maddie, when she writes her report, can include data on this is the number of youth volunteers they were in, they were engaging before they had a youth engagement program, and this and this is the number they're engaging now. So that so they can show the, how they're increasing the number of youth that they're engaging, um, increasing the number of groups. Um, in addition to that, another thing they can show is new partnerships that are resulting. Um, you know, now that youth groups know that Twin, that Twin Cities Habitat has opportunities for them. Um, it's, it's bringing more um, people into the organization. So um, for example, the, uh, they now have the opportunity to do a partnership with Minnetonka High School, a business class at Minnetonka High School that's doing a business or a marketing study for them on how to engage youth. Again, that's a partnership they never would have been able to pursue in the past because they didn't have the capacity to do it. But as a result of having a VISTA, they can now do that. And that's going to increase what the organization can do in the community. And it's also going to build more volunteers for them over time. Um, so that's an example of you know, how you get to the so what of the work that the VISTAs are, are doing and why it makes a difference. Um, so next up, let's get to some of those other um, priority areas that you can highlight when writing about accomplishments. Um, and again, I would describe these as special interest areas for the corporation. So, um, you know, in addition to the focus on housing, um, there are some other areas that, um, you know, if the work that you're doing as a VISTA happens to intersect with some of these other priority areas, those are definitely things to highlight as well. Um, so examples would include projects engaging veterans and military families. Um, if you have a veteran family who is being served, you know, is becoming a Habitat homeowner or is being helped by ABWK, those are fantastic things to, um, to highlight in your reports. Um, or if the work that the VISTA is doing is helping expand your affiliates' ability to intersect with groups like that. Um, that's great. Also, awards and recognition. If your affiliate receives an, an award or is honored um, for a program that 
that Avista helped contribute to, um, you know, definitely uh, those are things to, to highlight as well. Um, the picture here is a picture of our of the Vista from Goodhue County last year, Brittany, with um, Congressman John Klein, who provided or who gave an award to their affiliate for the work that they did with their AB and starting an ABWK program. Um, so that was a really um, great highlight. You can read more. You can read the highlight that we wrote and submitted to the corporation about that um, in the guidebook. Um, there's that story is in there on page 17. So that guidebook that we emailed you, um, you can check that out to read more about that story. But um, but these are other um, you know special interest areas that again, if the work you're doing happens to fall into some of these categories, please uh, highlight those as well. Let's see. So our next. Um, Step, moving on to step two, um, we're gonna talk about demonstrating impact. So you've identified your accomplishments, um, you know, you've sort of fleshed out what are the key elements of that accomplishment. Um, but in writing that up, you also want to write about how to or incorporate into that um, impact and making sure that, that you're getting to what is the impact of that work. Um, so these questions can help you flesh that out um, but I think what's more helpful sometimes are examples. Um, so next up, we have an example here um, that will be popping up momentarily. Um, great. So this is an example um, for a volunteer management type VISTA position. Um, so I'm going to ask maybe if we can get um, one of our... This is on the line to um, just to read the um, the example for us. So I think um, we had Joe and Maria, um, I believe, are on the line together. So I'm going to unmute you, folks, and ask. Um, oops. Yeah, ask if one of you would just kind of read the this example aloud for the group. Can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, great. The VISTA developed volunteer recruitment policies and procedures and a volunteer handbook. The policies, procedures, and handbook helped to provide a consistent orientation for all volunteers, leading to increased satisfaction and retention of new volunteers. A year ago, the satisfaction rate for new volunteers was 45%. Today, 50%. Last year's retention rate was 50%. This year, 60%. This increase will help the organization serve more families and build more homes. Great, thank you so much, Joe. Okay, so so I think this example is helpful um, because it really includes the the key elements of demonstrating impact or um, in your in writing up your accomplishments. Um, so we're going to break it down into what those pieces are. So key elements of demonstrating impact. Um, so the first of those is to state what did the VISTA do? Um, so from that example, from the example that Joe just read, um, what the VISTA did, they developed a volunteer, they developed volunteer recruitment policies and procedures and a volunteer handbook. Simple, straightforward, concise. This is what the VISTA did. The next sentence in that paragraph explained why what the VISTA did was significant. The policies, procedures, and handbook helped to provide a consistent orientation for all volunteers, leading to increased satisfaction and retention of new volunteers. So this sentence is really important because often what we get in your VISTA reports is sentence one, what the VISTA did. The VISTA developed a volunteer recruitment policies and procedures and a handbook. That's really important, that's really good work. But what we need to make sure that we don't overlook is explaining to our audience, who again is more than just Jody and Sarah, why that is so important, why those policies and procedures and the volunteer handbook are important to, to the affiliate. So that's what we get with sentence number two. 
um, the next key element is to provide data to illustrate the impact of that work. Um, so it's fine and great to say the VISTA developed a handbook and volunteers were more satisfied. Um, but that, but, you know, again, we're reporting to Congress and they want evidence. Okay, so I should just believe you that they're more satisfied? How much more satisfied are they? So using data like this um, can really illustrate, um, you know, what they're, what they're getting at or what they're looking for. Um, or, you know, providing that hard data to show, you know, what the, what the level of increase was. Um, so that's the third key element. And then finally, um, explaining why it matters. Um, so this is again, that so what question. Um, you know, so the affiliate's volunteers were more satisfied and they retained more volunteers. Why does that matter overall? And again, for the audience that we're reporting for, we can't just assume that they know having more volunteers helps us do more work and do our work better. We need to be explicit and laying that out for them. So that's, that's this fourth step of explaining why it matters. Um, so this is a formula in, in some ways that, that you can use when you're sitting down to write about your accomplishments. Um, you know, think about these four key elements and, and work on incorporating them into your report. Um, sometimes it's, for VISTAs that just started in August, this is gonna be more challenging because you're not likely to have a lot of data at this point about what changes happened. You're just getting started. Um, so in that situation, what you wanna focus on is, you know, what, what are you working toward? Um, because you're gonna have three more quarters that you're reporting, you know, you're gonna, be reporting three more times. Um, so in this first report, what you can talk about is what's your baseline? Where are you starting from? And what is your goal of where you'd like to get to? And then in each of your quarterly reports, you can talk about progress toward that. Um, so that, you know, by your fourth quarter report or oftentimes by your second, second and third quarter reports as well, um, you start to get data like this that you can include in talking about the impact of, of what you're doing as a VISTA. Um, and, and if as a VISTA you're struggling to figure out what is the impact or what data could I use, again, this is why it's really important to, involve, to be working with your supervisor in putting together these reports because sometimes the data that you, you might not have access to the data that you need to tell that story but the super, but your supervisor might, or others in the organization might. So having dialogue um, about how how can we show impact, what data can we use, um, you know, can help you find what you need. Um, so just in, uh, I'd be interested in what people's thoughts are about um, about this formula for um, for writing about impact. Does this help you in to get a vision of how to break it down? Just, just raise your hand if you would like to comment and we can unmute you. We've got one yes from Annie. <laughs> yes from Thank who? you, <laughs> Annie. Uh, I was actually, before you even asked that, um, I had chatted that it was before you even asked. I said, that's really helpful to hear. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of the things I was wondering about was how to report on data for a new VISTA. And so Erin happens to have been gathering a lot of baseline and benchmark data. So that is helpful for us. But then I also thought if somebody's struggling to come up with any baseline data, there's a whole lot of information here at Habitat Minnesota. So no guarantees, but it's worth checking with us to see what we might have if you're struggling to come up with something. Absolutely. And I would also say it's not too late. You know, if you're sitting there thinking, sure, oh, yep. it's the first quarter. I haven't looked at any data. I don't have a baseline. <laughs> um, it's not too late. You know, you can that you can establish that now. And again, you've got three more quarters of reporting after this. Um, so, um, you know, don't feel like you're behind behind and with no um, way to, to, to get what you need. 
Um, okay, so we're gonna move on to the next step in the process. Oops, oops. No, we're gonna look at another example. I skipped it. I skipped too far ahead in my notes. Okay, um, so we looked at the the um, example of a volunteer program, um, but I, next I'd like to look at another example, which is has a focus on family selection. Um, so I'm not gonna read this example aloud because um, I believe everybody is online as well as on audio. Um, so I guess if there is somebody who isn't able to see the presentation, maybe um, just send us a note about that in the chat panel so that we can, uh, that would be good for us to be aware of. But um, but rather than read this example, what what I'd like, to ask is, um, you know, thinking back to that formula we just talked about and applying that to this example. Um, some, and again, raise your hands um, if you would like to share. But what could we, what would need to be added or could be added to this example to get more of those key, to incorporate more of those key elements? Um, so, what piece of information or pieces of information would help? strengthen this in getting to the impact of um, of what this vista of what this avista's accomplishment is um, so and just to review um, the key elements are what did the vista do why is it significant what what data is there what evidence is there to show that it's significant and why does it matter what's the so what so what could be added to this Feel free to chat or raise your hand and we'll unmute you. Is everybody still there? <laughs> uh, Okay, so nobody has any ideas of uh, things to add? Well, apparently Zach physically raised his hand. That's what you're recording <laughs> on, so. Yeah, I see Annie. <laughs> I see Annie's hand. All right, so we have uh, we have a couple questions and a couple of hands raised, so, or comments, I mean. Great. Um, so Andrea asked, how did they evaluate the process? Mm-hmm. And um, let's see who's got their hand raised here. Looks like Annie. Annie, I'm gonna unmute you right now. If you want to share some more, can you hear me? There you go. Yeah, hi, sure can. Wonderful. Um, I I don't know. I feel like reading this. It it seems pretty negative. Mm -hmm. It's all about you know all the things that are failing and you know the goal is to decrease rather than saying oh let's increase this and it's not really showing the impact as much as it could I feel like um, or the significance and it's not really providing data either so um, I think it's missing quite a few things but maybe that's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah, so um, is there something specific, Annie, that, so maybe reframing the language to, instead of focusing on decreasing the dropout rate, focus yes. on increasing the completion rate? Yes, definitely. I think if it was, yeah, just phrased differently, I think it could be a lot better. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other folks have, thanks, Annie, for, uh, mm -hmm. for sharing your thoughts. Um, Aaron had was had some more to add, and then we have a couple more comments too. When it when it rains, it pours here. Great. Uh, so go ahead, Aaron, and then Dustin. I'll share your comment too. Hey guys. Um, I guess my thought was that they need to explain why it matters more, mm -hmm. or why the goal matters more. Whether they're looking at decreasing the dropout rate or increasing the um, success rate. Mm -hmm. um, I guess from my perspective, they could say that they want to decrease the dropout rate by 25% in order to, say, um, approve all the families that they want to approve. Um, 
earlier in the process rather than later, or to be able to, um, I guess that was kind of the main thought I had, was just being able to um, approve the desired number of families earlier um, in the whole building process to get that sweat equity going, homeowner uh, education classes going, that kind of thing. So. Mm -hmm. So, and family selection is, um, you know, an area that um, Habitat Minnesota has looked at. And so I think in getting to also to the, like, why it matters question, um, you know, sometimes it's the case that Avista is at an affiliate helping develop family selection because they haven't been able to, to qualify enough families, which has meant they haven't been able, you know, to meet, meet the need in the community to the level that they could. And so I think framing it also in terms of this is helping us connect more with more of the people who have a need and qualify for our program, you know, that that really gets to the so what of why what the VISTA is doing is important that, you know, they're, again, ultimately, the, the goal of VISTA is to eliminate poverty. So the more we can connect to how is what the VISTA doing helping ultimately to bring more people out of poverty. The more we can draw that line and make those connections, the more that it, um, I think, resonates with the audience that goes beyond just Jody and I here at Habitat Minnesota. Um, so, and I think family selection could be a really good example of that. You know, in the past, our affiliates only been able to serve this number of families because we struggled to, you know, connect with more families who um, were eligible for our programs. But now, as a result, of the VISTA's work, we can collect, we've, we have, we're finding more families, which means there's more that we can do in the community. Um, so we did have um, this question about, uh, well, a comment from Jerry, mm -hmm. but Jerry and Dustin are participating together and I shared that with everyone, but just about it increasing the qualified applicant pool. I think that was the more positive twist on it that the impact would be decreasing of the impact of decreasing the dropout rate would be increasing the qualified applicant pool. So we had that comment. And then did we talk about Andrea's question of how did they evaluate the process? Um, I, I think you did mention that. So that's another good example of incorporating. Okay. So they say the VISTA evaluated the organization's family selection process and determined that three out of four families who started failed to submit it. So, um, so you, that could be something to expand on. You know, the kind of the Vista did a focus group, or you know, you could get into more of what the Vista did to evaluate the family selection process um, it, to flesh that out a little bit more. Um, that could be an option. Yeah, that would be a good addition. Uh, and Jerry also added, I'm just, I just want to make sure everybody is represented, but Jerry also then added that it could also impact the number of homes we can build them, and mm -hmm. bringing it to that big picture. And then I did share Zach's um, comment as well. So just take a peek in your um, chat or question um, section then too, because I think it's, it kind of echoes what others were saying as well. Great. That was a flurry of activity. I had yeah. to... <laughs> you know, there's a lot. It's hard to, hard to listen and respond at the same time. <laughs> okay. And uh, thanks for responding. Yeah, yeah. Thank you all. I'm, and I guess part of it too is uh, we were joking about this earlier. In the in this web world, we sort of think, oh, everything happens instantaneously. And but there is, it does take time to type in your your responses. So um, so we're glad. Thank you all for engaging out there and. Um, I will be more patient in waiting for response uh, as we continue. Uh, okay, so let's move on to talking about step three in this process. And step three is actually when you sit down to write your report. And this is done after VISTAs and supervisors collaborate and select the accomplishments on which they are going to report. And then turning to the narrative report 
worksheet. Yeah. And all of you received this earlier, I think actually way back in August, and then again this week. And this is um, the worksheet that we highly, strongly recommend that you actually fill this out. I don't think it's appeared on your screen yet. Yeah, it's in the process of loading up, I think. So we're, okay. we're switching over to a view of, the, of this narrative report worksheet. So it should be popping up on your screen momentarily, uh, but it should hopefully look familiar to you. And we're still waiting. <laughs> you can see the bottom of it there. It's, it's starting to come. I'm not sure why it's going so slow, but. Okay. Well, as it's, as it's loading, um, you know, the, so it was back in August, I think. That, that I first emailed this, um, the, re the various forms that are involved in the reporting process. I emailed that out to the, to the new vistas. So you'd have at least uh, somewhat of a heads up that there are reports and there is certain data that, that needs to be collected. Um, so again, after VISTAs and supervisors have met and collaborated on one or two accomplishments on which to report, I'm going down to part C this does. This is where uh, you can draft your story. And in question number one, um, it ask you, asks you to summarize and describe your major accomplishments. So that's where you can draft using the formula that Sarah outlined before. Um, on page 16 of the PowerPoint, and we'll be providing you with a copy of the of the slide, so you'll have access to that as well. The information is also included in in your guidebook. Then uh, another key item, this does that you will be reporting is collaborations that you've had with entities in the community. That's question number two. And question number five asks for a human interest story. And as is set forth in the guidebook, if you can incorporate all three of these, your accomplishment, community collaboration, and the human interest story into one single story, You've, actually, you've hit a great home run, and you can see uh, an example in, on page 10 of, of the guidebook has an example where all three of these aspects were incorporated in a single report. That's the story on the ABWK yes. program development. Um, at the Freeborn Mauer affiliate. So, um, so that example that you'll see in the guidebook, which um, is what we sent you um, earlier this week um, in preparation for the webinar, um, really hits on the partnerships element, it hits on the accomplishment, and then it incorporates a human interest element as well. So, um, so you can you know, have a theme um, sometimes in, in terms of your achieve or your accomplishments for the quarter. And that won't always work, but if you have the opportunity to do that, uh, take advantage of it. Then supervisors um, will be filling out part E of this form. And number se question number seven is, is really the opportunity where having had a collaboration uh, discussion about what to report will be very helpful in 
in uh, this particular part of the form. So, and there's a bit of a delay, so it'll <laughs> it'll catch up here shortly. But we're just kind of highlighting the different questions. We do have a. Um, Go ahead. Sorry, we do have a, a, a question from Sir Britta's asking. So, Part C, we actually report activities, and then she also clarified, like number one, Part C. Number yeah. one of Part C is okay. is that. And Britta, if I need to unmute you so you can clarify yeah, the question, maybe please just raise your hand and I can do so. Yeah, let's, if you, unless that makes sense. Yeah, let's hear from Britta. I'd like just to get, yeah, I think that's a great question. Okay, Britta, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. I hope that's okay. Hello, Britta. She might be. Um, she says she can't see C. She's got it. She's been having a slow connection, so oh, yes. I can't see C yet either, though. Okay. Here it is. Okay. No, I, I don't have that sent to the. Okay. Oh, Britta, you can't hear? It looks like you have audio. Okay. Um. I think I hear Nathan actually. <laughs> Oh yeah, well we can hear you. <laughs> if you talk, I think you have a microphone. But okay. Well, let's just we'll move on. We'll we'll deal with okay, that later so, then. Um, number one says that you are to summarize and describe your major accomplishments this quarter, and when it talks about including activities in your work plan as well as any special projects, that's helping to, you know, you can you can look at basically anything that you've done throughout the quarter. Um, but then narrow it down and selecting just one or two. We're not looking for a listing of everything that you've done. And then when you're describing, when you've selected your accomplishment, when you're describing it, then you will talk about some of your activities, what it is that you did followed by um, an explanation of the impact and why it matters. And I think, you know, for supervisors that have been doing VISTA reporting for a long time, you, you might be thinking, you might be confused when <laughs> thinking, well, we've, we've always just, you know, talked about what all the things that VISTA has done. So, you know, I want to acknowledge that this is a change from what we've asked you to talk about or to, sh you know, report on in the past. Um, you know, that in the past you may have listed all the many activities that the VISTA did during that quarter, and that was great. Um, but we're moving into a new phase, so we're asking for something different. Um, and also, there is another place um, in the report where you can be giving those updates on the activities in the VISTA work plan. Um, and that's coming up when we'll talk about the VISTA work plan update element of the report. So that that might help clarify, you know, where where you can provide that those more detailed updates of what's happening related to specific tasks and activities in the work plan. Um, okay, so we've looked at the um, the Word document worksheet, and now we're going to look at the data spreadsheet. Yep. And while we're trying to load that, <laughs> I would like to again emphasize. Um, well, of course, there now it just pops right up. But in terms of the narrative report worksheet, um, you are strongly urged to draft the information on that worksheet. And then when we come to when you come to the online process you can simply cut and paste the answers into the online um, form and you will have your own copy of the report to put in your file and use in the myriad of ways that we've already talked about ways to use this information. That will also be your backup and, um, and you know, I will, I will tell you, do not sit down into the, and take the online form that we will email you a link to and, and compose your answers directly into that. Because if, 
if something happens where your internet connection is interrupted or if you walk away from your computer and it goes to sleep for a few minutes, you might lose all of what you wrote if you try to write it directly into the online form. So I, so I caution you that if you don't use that worksheet to compose your answers and then just cut and paste from there, you might lose really <laughs> a lot of work um, that you put into writing those things. So write it in a Word document, use this, use that worksheet and you'll, um, you'll be a lot happier. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I, we got a call last year from Avisa who, um, you know, wrote a report and something happened and it, it didn't come through um, the online one and she had to do it all over again. So you don't want to have to, you don't want to be in that situation. So it looks like the data spreadsheet that you will be filling out on a quarterly basis is up there on your screen. If you'll notice in the bottom portion of the spreadsheet, there's an example, which is actually what we're viewing at the moment. There are also first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. So each time that you are reporting, Please be sure that you're entering it into the correct quarter. Now, in terms of walking through the example and the kinds of data that you are going to be required to report, the first part of it uh, deals with the volunteers that you have either trained, directed, or in any way been involved with. We'd like a listing of those um, by date, group, and activity. However, for those of you that might be dealing, say, at the ReStore, if you're dealing with volunteers on a daily basis, we're not asking that you set those forth, you know, by date on a daily basis. You can aggregate those and simply indicate that it's ReStore activities provide the total number of volunteers and the number of volunteer hours. Um, and, and this is data that we have to report um, to the corporation for all VISTAs. So, um, you know, some of you may be thinking, well, it's not in my work plan to work with volunteers. That's not part of what I do. I don't, and you might be thinking, oh no, I don't have any data to report for this. Um, and that's okay. If, if, if your work plan does not include um, things related to engaging volunteers, um, then then it's it's perfectly fine to if you have to report zero. Um, however, if your work plan has significant elements um, that are that involve engaging volunteers and and you have nothing to report, then then that's a problem. <laughs> um, so um, so if if you're wondering how this applies to you or have concerns about what you know. Do I have data? Should I be reporting data for this? If I don't, is that a problem? Um, feel free to contact Jody or I directly um, to discuss your individual situation. But um, but this is information we have to report for all VISTAs. Um, so. And I think this is true for this entire data mm -hmm. spreadsheet. Okay. This is information that Habitat Minnesota needs to report on for all VISTAs. Mm -hmm. So the next part of the data sheet is the total. Yeah, so um, next, the next section you'll see there is section two, which asks for um, to report on the total volunteer hours for all affiliate activities. Um, so this, so section one, what we're asking is for information about numbers of volunteers and volunteer hours engaged by specifically by the VISTA. Um, in section two, what we're asking is as a whole for the entire organization, how many volunteer hours did you have for each of these months? Um, and the reason that we're collecting that information is that, you know, we aggregate it and then it can help us in reporting on, you know, um, the number of volunteer hours that, that all the affiliates that are hosting VISTAs are, you know, engaging this number of volunteers on a monthly or quarterly basis. So it gives us some of that baseline data, like we were talking about earlier, 
um, that we can use when we're reporting on impact. Um, so for this section of the report, you as the VISTA might not have access to this information. It might be the someone else on staff might be the person who um, you know, manages and collects this information. So that's something again for you and your supervisor to talk about is where do you go to get this information um, when it comes time to report it in your PPR? Who can, who can get it for you? Or is it something that you need to be collecting and, and tracking um, in order to report on these things? And going down to section three, and this is VISTA generated in-kind donations that occurred during the quarter. And simply again here, any donated goods or services, expert advice that you uh, were able to garner, equipment, property, um, this is where that would be reported again with the date, the donation source, the type, and the estimated value. Section four, again, is VISTA related, generated grants, monetary donations, any type of fundraising that was generated by the VISTA in whatever quarter you're reporting on would be identified here. And what I would say, I think about this, both sections three and four is that Sometimes it's it's hard to judge, or so I know sometimes affiliates struggle with deciding. Um, well, we we had this fundraiser that the Vista helped with, and we raised this much money. But do we put that in the Vista report because it 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 wasn't just the Vista that did it? Um, what we, what the corporation has told us is that it's that you know they they want to know about the overall. Um, resources that are being generated for efforts that the VISTA is contributing to. So if the VISTA is part of a, va of a major fundraiser, or if the VISTA is part of an effort that, that results in a major in-kind donor, um, you know, bring, donating something to the organization, that should be listed in the report. They don't have to be things that are only attributable directly to the VISTA. Um, you know, again, this isn't a performance evaluation. This isn't saying, you know, that our VISTA raised $50,000 on their own. Aren't they great? You know, this is saying as an organization, we got this $50,000 grant through a combined effort that included the VISTA, and that's going to help us do more work. It's going to help us serve more families, build more homes. Um, so there, that's the kind of information they're, they're looking for. Um, so, you know, don't not include things just because there were other people involved in getting that resource into the organization. Section five deals with family selection. And again, this might be information that the VISTA will need help uh, within the organization getting the numbers. Uh, to include here, but in the first part, it's the total number of applicants for home ownership and the ABWK program, if, if in fact you have one. Yeah, so again, you may have zeros to report. You know, if you don't have an ABWK program, you might put a zero there, and that's just fine. Um, but again, even if you're, even if as a VISTA, the work that you're doing has nothing to do with family selection, we still need this data because again, it helps us tell the bigger picture story of how many families is the affiliate serving or, or how many are being reached. Um, and because ultimately the work that every VISTA is doing is contributing to the overall function and operation of the affiliate. So um, this is giving us baseline data to help us in the reports that we have to submit to the corporation. Okay, so those are the two worksheets. Um, are there any questions about either of them, kind of general questions that might be helpful for the entire group? You know, if you have individual questions that are specific to you as an individual VISTA, 
um, you can contact us offline about that, but is there any overall question um, about this data and what we're looking for um, that we can address? As we're transitioning here to the next, back to the PowerPoint. I don't see anything yet. Okay. We just must have done such a good job in covering it. No questions. <laughs> okay, well, or maybe there's a delay. So as we wait for your questions to come in, um, I'll move on to talk about um, step five of the process. So that, um, again, I think there's a bit of a delay, but uh, the slides should be popping back up momentarily. Um, so the next step in the process that, um, I'm just going to hit briefly on is what I was referring to earlier in the context of Britta's question. Um, so, you know, if you're wondering, well, how how do I report on what uh, on the more specific activities that I've been doing as a VISTA? Um, this is where that step comes into play. Um, the work plan update. Um, so as part of the online report that that you'll submit, um, one of the things we'll ask you to do is to attach a copy of your work plan of the VISTA's work plan um, with that have brief comments um, inserted into the work plan about the progress to date on the tasks for that quarter. So as you all know, in your work plans, there's, there's a time frame um, for each of the tasks. Um, you know, might say quarter one and two or quarter three and four, or quarter four. Um, so what we want you to do is just give a quick update for that task on what's the status of it. Is it complete? Is it in progress? Is it delayed or behind schedule? Um, uh, or is it something that's been, you know, that's, that, that task is no longer, um, you know, that, that that's a task that's no longer going to be completed. Um, because the affiliates identified, you know, we thought when we wrote the plan, we needed that, and now we've discovered we don't. So, you know, it's um, no longer part of the VISTA's activities. Um, um, we do have a, a question from right. Zach that says, so does this mean that we should be reporting any grant the affiliate takes in as long as we have some part in it? Also, what if we don't have any part in the grant that the affiliate takes in? Yeah. That, that question is from Tristan. Okay. They like to clarify. <laughs> so yes, so yes, if the Vista has some part in in contributing to a grant that um, that comes into the organization, you know that should be that should be um, talked about um, and listed on on the worksheet. You know, if it's a fifty thousand dollar grant, um, or you know, if it's a significant amount of money, and you list it on on the spreadsheet make sure that in the narrative part of, of the report that you're written, that, that you talk about that $50,000 so that, you know, it might be, you know, as either an accomplishment or that you explain what that is. Um, because when we're compiling that data, you know, if we see 50, oh, a $50,000 grant, that's significant. We want to know more about that. Um, and if there's nothing about it in the written part of the report, then we're going to call you and say, hey, we saw this $50,000. What's that all about? Um, so, so do include that, include things like that. If the VISTA has a role in putting together a grant application, you know, describe and explain that as part of that report that you're writing. And that could come in the VISTA part of the report or in the supervisor section, but talk about that. If it's just a if it's a grant that the affiliate gets that the VISTA doesn't really have any role in getting, um, then it, it becomes a, it depends situation. If a previous VISTA's work contributed to the affiliate being able to get that, then we do want to know about that because that shows the impact, even though it's not the VISTA that's serving right now, that's showing the impact of a previous VISTA. Um, but if it's, um, if it's just a grant that the affiliate got that the VISTA had no part in and is and is in no way connected to the project that VISTA is working on, um, then it, it shouldn't 
be reported on that data spreadsheet. Um, again, it's it's hard to figure out. I think sometimes as you might be individual vistas might be sitting there thinking, or even supervisors might be struggling with. Well, I'm not sure if I should include this or not. Those are situations where you know give Jody or I a call. Um, or send us an email and you know with more information, and we can give you more specific guidance on. Oh yes, you should include that, or no, that doesn't really um, fit, um, kind of thing. So hopefully that answers the question. Okay, so back to the work plan update part. So, um, so as part of the online report that you'll submit, you'll um, we'll ask you to attach a copy of the work plan with brief comments um, for each task on the status of, of that activity or of that task. Um, so, and you should, um, so do, do that in a Word document version of the work plan, which all of your affiliates should have a Word document version of the work plan, not the, not the version that's on my AmeriCorps but a Word document version. Um, if you don't have that, contact Jody or I and we can get you a copy of the Word document version of your work plan that you should use um, to write in the little comments. Uh, we have another question. Great. It's from Dustin asks, if it's a good question, are we only mentioning the progress of quarter one activities? So if we've started a quarter two activity, should we mention that also? Yeah, no, definitely include, um, you know, if you, if you are ahead um, and have, have made progress on activities that were, you know, written to be, to happen in other quarters, definitely give us updates on that. Um, you know, we, so, you know, we won't, if we're looking at the work plan and it says it's something to be done in quarter three and nothing's happened with, you know, and you don't have any updates on that, you know, we're, that's fine. That's that's just fine. But if you have done something, you know, definitely write about that because it might be something that you're getting done earlier than was anticipated. Um, so we definitely want to hear about that. But if you send us that work plan and there's a bunch of quarter one activities there with no with, that nothing's happened, you know, or there's been no progress, you know, then we're gonna follow up to say what about what's going on with all these quarter one things that haven't had progress made. Um, and it may be under those circumstances that there may need to be a revision in your work plan. Um, you know, it's not that you're not doing anything. It's that the needs of your affiliate and the opportunities available to the affiliate have changed since the original work plan was drafted. So that's something to bear in mind as well. Good question, though. Thanks for... Bring, raising that, Dustin. Um, so next, I'm going to touch here on timesheets. Um, so and this, so as part of again what you submit with that online report form, we'll ask you to submit copies of the timesheets. And actually, this will be in the supervisor section of the report. Um, so the so every Vista should be keeping a timesheet, um, and the timesheets should be signed. Um, we, generally, they are monthly timesheets, and they should be signed by both the VISTA and the supervisor. Um, and we need to have copies of those that we keep on file here um, as documentation of the payroll that, that we administer. Um, you know, our auditors, if they, when they do their annual audit, sometimes monitor and check timesheets because they want to verify that people are being paid for time that they actually served. Um, so, so you're required to submit those timesheets and you can either send, because they have to be signed, you can either scan and send and attach them as a PDF file and submit them electronically. Or you can, if you don't, if your affiliate doesn't have the capability to do that in terms of your technology, you can also mail, um, mail copies of those to us. But we do need copies of those timesheets. Um, and the timesheets should be an accurate reflection of the time the VISTA has served, including use of vacation days and sick days. Um, so, you know, if, if you take a sick day, it should be recorded on the timesheet as a sick, you know, as sick use of sick time um, so that we, you know, so that's documented for, um, for purposes of um, the corporation monitoring as well, you know, use of. We want the corporation wants to make sure that not all that all of our vistas aren't just 
serving 20 hours a week. Um, so the timesheets are what they look at for to gather information on that. So the next step in the process is actually filing um, the various reports. And we have an online process. So VISTAs, what will happen is I will be emailing you a link to the online quarterly project progress report. When you get that, and assuming that you filled out your narrative report worksheet, you can um, click on the link. And basically the process, the online process will guide you through exactly what it is that you need to do. Uh, but you can cut and paste your responses from the worksheet. Um, and it is your responsibility to complete your portion of the narrative to upload your work plan with comments on your progress. And it's also your responsibility to upload the completed data spreadsheet. Once that's done, you can click on submit and an email will be automatically sent to your supervisor. In addition to the online process, don't forget to upload significant examples of your work, uh, like if you drafted a, a, a handbook or policies and procedures or a market communications audit, be sure and upload those documents to WIDEO. And that's basically it once we get, you know, here at the end, um, it's a pretty simple online process. And like I say, the online process will lead you through what you need to do on a step-by-step -step basis. So the guidance is actually in, in the online document that you'll receive. Then supervisors, when your VISTA, uh, when you receive that email that the VISTA has completed his or her port, portion of the online report, um, then it's your opportunity to click on the link to review the VISTA's reports, and then you can cut and paste your responses into part E of the online worksheet. And then be sure either to upload the VISTA's timesheets for the quarter, or you can, if you don't have a scanning ability at your affiliate, you can uh, send those by snail mail. And then Click Submit, and that's the end of quarterly reporting. <laughs> uh, so I know it, it, going over it this way, it, there are a lot of pieces to this reporting process. So um, I do have a final slide here that just sort of summarizes what each of the documents um, are that, um, that you have and that need to be completed, you know, again, um, there's the narrative report worksheet. Um, so that's where both VISTAs and supervisors can write their, you know, compose their responses to the questions um, that you'll, that, you know, when the time comes to do the online report, you'll cut and paste from that worksheet. Um, there's a data spreadsheet that we reviewed. Um, so complete that. Um, as long as you, you know, complete that narrative worksheet and complete the data spreadsheet, and you'll have all the information and be ready to go when to, to complete that online um, report. Um, and then you'll, that and then also the um, work plan with the progress updates added. So those, those three things. Um, then uh, the timesheets, so that's the supervisors will submit that with their part. Um, and then uh, the final element is VISTA's uploading significant examples of their work to the WIDEO site. Um, so that's, those are the major documents um, that we'll be looking for as part of that. Um, if you have questions about, um, you know, about any of, 
of these different elements, please let us know. Um, and we can, you know, get you copies of things if you need them or, um, or address, you know, any questions about, you know, what we're looking for and what the different pieces are. Okay, well, I, I amazingly, we have just a couple minutes ago when Jody and I were plan or were kind of going through this yesterday, we thought, oh my goodness, I hope we get through um, everything in the time allotted. But um, are there any kind of final questions that you have um, that we can address in the next couple in the couple minutes that we have remaining about the PPR process or accomplishments? Um, or things of that nature. Uh, one thing too, just as we're waiting, you, there might be people composing a question out there, but um, another thing I will also mention is, um, you know, this is a process of kind of learning how to present um, and frame accomplishments um, for reports. And so, you know, it may be that after this first court set of first quarter reports, we might do another webinar in the future to kind of dig into this more deeply and look at more examples um, because it takes time to kind of learn how to do reporting this way. Um, it's been something we've focused a lot of time on here at Habitat Minnesota with the VISTA program in the last few years. And, you know, it's taken us a while to figure out how to do this. So. We don't expect you all to be perfect at it from the start, um, but we appreciate your, you know, using the resources that we're providing and making an effort to, to really, um, you know, look at the information that you're providing in the reports and focus on, you know, how to really get to communicating the impact of the work you're doing. Um, um, this is April. And um, our friends in Douglas County wanted to insert some applause here at the end. <laughs> and uh, and I just wanted to mention then too, and I posted it in the chat for everyone to see, but we do have our monthly webinar series next week um, on Wednesday at 11 o'clock on October 30th. And it's really fo focusing on advocacy and how we can um, do more legislative advocacy throughout the state to support our programs, the stories these the, that you're coming up with or putting together for the PPR would be great things to share with those lawmakers and legislators. And um, so if you haven't already registered for that uh, webinar, we'd love to have somebody from each of our affiliates represented. I think in the past, our greater Minnesota affiliates haven't always um, had their voices heard to help create a legislative agenda. And so that's what we're trying to change and get some of that input up front instead of just presenting a legislative agenda. So anything that you can share about relationships you already have or relationships you want to protect and, and things like that, it should be a really fun discussion. But I think these stories go hand in hand with that kind of advocacy. Uh, and I'll just mention too, so um, as, I said in the beginning, this we have recorded this webinar, so a recording of it will be available on YouTube um, early next week, and we'll send out the link to that. So if you want to, you know, revisit this um, later. Also, if you're if uh, well, we have some vistas who weren't able to participate, and some supervisors. So if your supervisor wasn't able to be on the webinar today, um, we'll ask that they um, do that they review the recording um, and. Uh, so that they get this really valuable information about, you know, what we're looking for and particularly what what's different and what we're looking for than what we've asked for in the past from these reports. So if your supervisor is not on the webinar, please uh, give them a heads up that, uh, you know, we'll, they'll want to check this out and uh, we'll be following up with them. Um, great. Well, thank you all um, for your time and attention and participation today. And um, have a wonderful weekend. Thanks, everybody.